Good morning. Thanks so much for having me this morning. Like was mentioned, uh, we've got our economic snapshots on your table. Also on the app is a copy of uh, each one of those and also my presentation. So uh, feel free to, uh, to refer to those as well. Also, just for your information, if you look on the back side on the bottom, there's a dark blue box, and that has our um, contact information. If you're interested, we send out a weekly uh, blog and email about the economy. We send out these economic snapshots on a, on a monthly basis for Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, the nation, and then also for uh, the, the market. We have a market snapshot. So that's something that if you either send me an email or just go on our website, uh, you can get signed up for that. So what I want to do today is just kind of uh, frame what's going on, uh, what's happening with our economy, also what's going on uh, more locally and in the basin. So uh, let's see, am I going to run this? Let's see. Yep, there we go. Okay, so first on the national level, what you can see, so tomorrow morning we'll be getting the new jobs report uh, from the Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics. It's a monthly number that comes out the first Friday of every month. So last month uh, was a really good month. It actually surprised to the upside, growing 209,000 jobs. Uh, the expectation for next month, uh, or excuse me, the expectation for the new numbers that come out tomorrow is that we could see uh, similar numbers to that uh, of what we saw um, last month. So because of that, one of the surprising things is we've now seen over a million jobs added during the Trump presidency. It roughly matches uh, the same number of jobs that were added in the last six months of the uh, Obama presidency. So we're still on track. We haven't gained much uh, in terms of employment. We also haven't uh, lost any ground either when we look at where it's happening. Now, the one I really want you to pay attention to is that top one. Natural resources and mining uh, for several years, as you know very well, has been contracting, uh, sometimes as much as 15 to 18 percent on an annual basis. Just in the last few months at the national level, it swung positive. So now the fastest growing uh, sector of the economy, growing 7.2 percent, uh, followed by uh, 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 professional business services, which is a long-term trend of kind of the shift to the service sector economy. And when you look at the, the number of jobs creating, that's where uh, you really see the professional and business services jumping out and being kind of the uh, overall indicator uh, that we're watching. When we look at uh, unemployment rate, this is a, a really interesting story. You can see how we topped off at uh, about 10% unemployment in the nation following the Great Recession. We've dropped all the way down to 4.3% now. So we, we generally consider, and that red line is the 5% unemployment rate. We've dropped below that now, so now we're at 4.3%. It's, uh, it's a good thing, but it's also a struggle. When you have unemployment uh, dramatically below uh, that 5% level, you start to see labor shortages, you start to see struggles. We're, we're really seeing this in areas like the uh, construction industry or uh, some of the high-tech industries are really struggling to find qualified workers. When we look, now one of the, 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 the benefits of it is we're starting to pull people off the sidelines. So as the unemployment rate drops, this is what we call our labor force participation. It's of the entire population, of everyone who can work, 16 to 116 years old, how many are either actively working or looking for a job? And we're at 62.9% uh, in, in July, and you can see how it's kind of turned a corner. Just a few months ago, it's turned a corner and it's starting to go up. But then also, look how much ground we have to, to come back from. We're, we're down significantly from where we were in the 2000s, and we're, not, we're, we're, we're essentially at the labor force uh, rate of the 1970s. So we're going in the right direction, but we haven't gone far enough. The other area that has a lot of economists just scratching their head is with high employment growth, with low unemployment, with labor force coming in, everything is kind of hitting at all cylinders, but then our wage growth is, is, has been stagnant. 
and, and this is one that continues to surprise economists and, and market observers. Came in at 2.5% last month. We should be, and you can see, back in uh, the pre-recession time, we were growing at about 3 to 4%. We should be growing at 3 to 4% if we have uh, labor shortages and if we have a uh, very high demand for labor. So why isn't it growing enough? And this is one of our struggles. Well, one reason is our uh, inflation has been too low. So on the producer, so you have the consumer side inflation and you have producer side inflation. You can see how the producer, this is uh, the producer price index, uh, was uh, rising very well in the last year or so, but then just lately it started to dip down. So if producers can't charge more for their products, then they can't pay their employees more. So we, can't see, so we don't see that wage growth. Well, why can't they charge more? Because consumer spending is dropping also. Uh, th that red line that you see is the Fed's uh, inflation target. They want to see inflation around 2% per year going forward. That's a, a, that's a stable rate of inflation growth. And you can see not only did we only get up to that rate very briefly, but now it's dropping. So consumers aren't spending enough, so we're seeing that drop in inflation down to 1.4%, which is affecting the producers, which is affecting the wages and uh, kind of keeping them down. And then uh, when we look at the consumer price index, it's just another indicator of inflation also uh, dropping down below that 2% level. So uh, with all this in mind, you know, what's the Fed going to do? Uh, we've, we've, we've been uh, talking about so much about the Fed uh, working on interest rates. They've increased interest rates now four times since they were at historic lows. Uh, we're now at about 1.25 percent on the, that's on the overnight very short-term rate that the Fed controls. Uh, so the question is, well, what are they going to do next? Well, the Fed has said that they are going to continue increasing interest rates so remember we're at about 125 right now, that they're gonna raise them up to about 3% on the very short term, which if you just take your car loan, so that, you know, that, that 1.25 to three is you know, about a percent and a half, percent 75 higher, and then if you add that onto your car loan and add that onto your mortgage, that's kind of what you should expect to see. However, so even with this, this is the Fed's official forecast, they've said it's data dependent. So what they're saying is, if the economic data isn't strong enough, we will not raise interest rates. So, so there's some question about if and when they'll do it. They, the, most people think that if the Fed does raise interest rates again, it will be in December. However, a bigger concern is the Fed's uh, uh, balance sheet. So essentially what, what happened, if you look at the, the very beginning before 2008, before the, before the recession, the Fed had about $800 billion on their balance sheet. This is where the Fed prints money. When you hear about the Fed printing money, this is what they really mean. And between, in response to the Great Recession, the Fed went from $800 billion in assets to $4.5 trillion in assets. And essentially what they did was they bought uh, mortgage-backed securities. So they just started buying up uh, these home loans that everyone's getting. I'm, I'm guessing many of you in this room have had your mortgage bought on the secondary market by the Fed. And so they, they just started pulling in all these mortgage-backed securities. So now they're at $4.5 trillion and they've got to get their balance sheet back down. The, the, the problem with this is it was like an adrenaline, adrenaline shot into the heart of the economy. And it did that and it boosted the economy, but it also starts to create bubbles creates asset bubbles, creates big increases in home prices. It's uh, essentially perpetuating uh, a higher uh, market than would happen without their influence. So the Fed has said they want to get back down to that 800 billion. So they possibly, as soon as September, the Fed has committed to start selling off these assets. Well, once they do that, by definition, if increasing from 800 to 4.5 trillion uh, is a boost to the economy, decreasing back down to 800 billion will be a drag on the economy. And so this could be a possible downside risk for the uh, overall economy. So when we look at our region, things are looking really good. The nation is a little bit iffy, 
uh, and, and I'm talking region, uh, uh, Utah and the rest of the states, you see that Utah continues to be the fastest growing state in the nation with growth over twice the rate of the nation. Uh, and, and then also you see that we're right in the center of the fastest growing area in our country. So we're seeing very strong and vibrant population growth. The one I want you to pay attention to here, so green is natural increase. That's our births and deaths. That's very stable and slowly growing. So that's a good sign of, of stable population growth. But the blue one is our net migration. And it's showing us that because our economy is so strong, it's pulling more people in. And so we saw our migration jump by 40% last year. And then we expect similar increases uh, going forward because as the Utah economy remains so strong, we're pulling more and more people in. Uh, so w when we look at growth by county, I want you to be a little careful with this one because it's getting a year old, but we see kind of a, a donut effect where uh, relatively slower growth uh, in Salt Lake and then higher growth in the areas uh, around that area. Uh, Uinta Basin uh, in this is still showing uh, population loss, but this, like I said, is as of April of last year. When we get the new numbers, uh, I think we'll start to see that changing a little bit. And I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm gonna dig down into the county data. Uh, employment growth in Utah, fifth highest in the country. Uh, and again, that same general trend of very uh, strong growth throughout our general region. In fact, during the recession, we lost about 92,000 jobs. Since then, we've gained nearly 300,000 jobs. Uh, so it's been a, a very uh, robust recovery overall. Now, here's where you start to see a little bit of a difference. So look at the natural resources and mining for Utah. Remember, for the nation, it's, one of the, it, it's the highest growing sector. Now, a year ago, natural resources and mining were, uh, was, uh, jobs were still following Fall, uh, falling double digits uh, in the state. Now it's down to about a uh, 6% drop. So what we're seeing is it's still falling on a year-over-year -year basis, but we're seeing that diminishing. And uh, I was looking at the, the data for Wyoming yesterday, and Wyoming has already flipped positive. So if you kind of think of nation has gone positive, Wyoming just went positive within the last couple months, and I think within the next uh, maybe three to six months, we'll see this flip in the natural resources and mining for the state as well. And then just uh, uh, when you look at the absolute jobs, you see again the biggest numerical increases in that professional business services. When we look at the employment growth by county, you start to see, and th this is a little more current data, you start to see that the basin is starting to do a little bit better. There's still losses, but the losses are uh, getting smaller and smaller as the economy uh, improves. Let's see. Uh, unemployment rate in Utah is the 15th lowest in the nation. Now this is, you know, I, I don't really want to be the lowest unemployment rate in the nation. We just talked about how uh, very low unemployment can actually be a drag on your economy. So, so we're at a good place. I don't mind us, you know, kind of being where we are, and I think it's, it, it's a, a more stable uh, unemployment rate for our state. When we look at uh, geographically where we're seeing uh, our higher unemployment, again, the basin is seeing higher, but it's not the highest in the state anymore. South, uh, the Four Corners area is seeing our highest levels of unemployment, and we're seeing that uh, dropping down as well. Consumer sentiment. Uh, this is one of the, the surprising areas. Uh, we saw a big jump following the uh, November election in consumer sentiment, and it continues to be very strong. We just got new numbers this week. Uh, so that, that line, that red line is 110, and 110 indicates a prosperous economy. The new consumer sentiment numbers that came in were 122. So people feel really good about the economy, and they continue to feel good about the economy. The, a sign of that, if, if you heard about North Korea firing a ballistic missile over the top of Japan on Tuesday. The markets barely reacted because people are looking past some of these uh, uh, issues and looking at the fundamentals of the market and they say uh, things, are, things are still strong and we still feel good. And then uh, inflation in Utah, 
is much stronger than the nation, uh, growing uh, closer to that uh, 3% uh, that we want to see. So we're seeing uh, uh, stronger inflation. I don't know. Yeah, also strong, stronger wage growth in the state. In fact, Utah has the second highest growing uh, wages in the country. So let's talk about the basin specifically. So what you can see is we had a big drop down. So the, the one I want you to pay attention to is that red line near the top where we saw the drop following the, uh, the energy crisis. But since then, we've started to see it going back up again. Now, the, the employment growth is still negative in the county, but look at the, at the, uh, the change in that line where we're just about to pass the state level. And I think in the next, like I said, in the next maybe three to six months, uh, the uh, Uinta County will surpass the state and actually have employment growth positive and possibly even higher than the state average again. When we look at unemployment, similar trend where Uinta County still has 6.5% unemployment, higher than the state, but look how it's come down from that high uh, we experienced uh, in, in 2015 and 2016. And then the other one at the bottom, initial claims for unemployment insurance are much lower than the last two years. So that's an early indicator of how things are, are looking with the uh, unemployment sector and it's much lower. So another good indicator of, of future growth. Now this one you really have to, if I could like zoom in. Um, th so this is looking at wage growth. Now you can see how wages were going up for much of uh, the, the period after the recession. But then again, that same period, that late 2015 started to drop and they've been dropping ever since. However, in the last month, in the last quarter, you see that kind of turn and it's just starting to recover. So wages are generally the last thing to recover. You see the employment growth first, unemployment second, wages third. So we're just starting to see that tick up in wages again uh, as the economy uh, continues to improve in the county. And then we're seeing uh, construction is looking much stronger. Uh, you can see that 25% uh, increase in home construction uh, in the county. So that's a really strong indicator. Um, but now keep in mind that these can be very volatile. So uh, it's higher than the state, but, um, but it's still not high, as high as it was uh, a few years ago. And then uh, when we look at the, at the taxable sales, uh, another strong indicator, you see again, uh, that big drop from 15 to 16 and then uh, 16 to 17, it's been coming up and taxable sales have actually surpassed the state average growing at 7.6% versus 6.7%. So overall, uh, we, we have seen that turn in the economy in, uh, in Uinta County. And then quickly for Duchesne, uh, interestingly, Duchesne has already started to see positive job growth at 1%, not as high as the state, but it is going positive and it's on the way up and you see a, a similar, by the way, uh, I don't know if there's anyone from the Department of Workforce Services, they do an amazing job. This data, this last data is all from our State Department of Workforce Services and they're just phenomenal. Uh, the second one, uh, when we look at our unemployment, has dropped down to 6%, so it's still a little bit higher than the state, but look at the trend of that curve. Uh, it's coming down and we're seeing much better uh, results and also those unemployment uh, initial claims are down too. Uh, wages are, have also turned the corner, not as much as you in a county, but we're seeing that, that turn in the wages as well and we should expect those to be going up soon. This is the one, uh, we're actually down a little bit in our home construction in Duchesne County. So like I said, it can be pretty volatile um, and we're not seeing the, the kind of recovery that we're seeing in uh, Uinta County, but here's the crazy one. Taxable sales up 25%. So uh, really skyrocketing uh, in, that, in that indicator uh, for Duchesne County. So essentially what we're seeing, uh, the national economy is looking pretty good. Consumers feel good, businesses feel good. The problem is consumers aren't turning those good feelings into actual spending. So we're not seeing the kind of inflation that we'd like to see. We're not seeing uh, the kind of uh, producer inflation that we want to see. Housing growth is strong. Uh, uh, here in the West, we're seeing very good 
uh, population growth, very good employment growth. Uh, the, the low unemployment is something we need to uh, be dealing with, something we need to do is better match up the skills of workers with the needs of the workforce. And then, uh, and then uh, one of our ongoing issues, and this is something I'm really happy to see President Trump working on, is trying to address overregulation. Uh, regulation from government is crippling small businesses, it's cripple, uh, crippling businesses throughout our country, and we've got to be doing more uh, to address that. And then just quickly, it's not in the presentation, but uh, with regard to the economic impacts of, uh, of the hur hurricane in, in Houston, so it's still so soon that we don't know exactly what the impacts are going to be, um, but what we do know is that about a third of the refining capacity in the U.S. Uh, is either uh, uh, going to be hal either halted already or could be affected. Uh, the, the pipeline uh, providing gas into the Northeast has been disrupted. Uh, we're seeing uh, excess supplies of, of essentially crude because they're all being held back. So what's been really interesting, and I've been watching the markets really closely even this morning, uh, oil prices had been down. As of right now, though, we're up about $52 a barrel. So it's actually jumped about just under 3% this morning. Um, we're, I think we will continue to see disruptions uh, for it could be the next few weeks or months as we work through uh, recovering from, uh, from the, the disaster. It could possibly uh, be a benefit for the basin. In fact, in, uh, in the Wall Street Journal this morning, they specifically mentioned uh, oil shale as, and, and fracking as a, as a solution that could uh, be used even more uh, in a reaction to the, to the problems in Houston. But uh, it, the, the other area that I'm really interested about is what's going to be the impact on the overall workforce as we start the rebuilding. This is the largest storm in, in U.S. history, over 50 inches of rain in some areas, uh, 300,000 people um, displaced right now. Uh, the rebuilding is going to be many years. Uh, how is that going to affect the overall labor situation in the country as people flow down to Houston uh, to rebuild and, and to change that? So it's going to be really interesting to watch, and it's going to be uh, a big impact on our entire country for years to come. So thanks so much for having me.